Hey, thank you so much for joining me today on this video. We're gonna be talking about the IT manager. What does the IT manager do? We're gonna be talking about their skills, their responsibilities, and what they do from a day-to-day -day basis. Before we do that, please remember to always subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, clicking on the notification bell to be kept up to date with all of my video releases. Let's talk about the IT manager right now. So if you're watching this, you are either an IT manager, you want to become an IT manager, you're somebody in a senior position that wants to hire an IT manager and, you, and perhaps you want to know the skills. You could be somebody that works in the HR department, in the people department, and you want to know a little bit more about what the IT manager's responsibilities are. Whatever the case, hopefully this video is helpful to you. So the role of the IT manager can be different from company to company. Small, medium, large companies will generally have some form of IT manager or IT management structure, and their roles and the responsibilities could be different depending on the company, but also the industry. What sort of company, well, what does the company actually do? Some IT managers can be technical. You know, they've moved up the ranks from technical positions into the IT manager. Other IT managers and leaders could be more process and policy driven and not as technical. Others could be good at both, both technical and good at process and policies and management altogether. Essentially, an IT manager is responsible for the day-to-day -day IT operations, responsible for the IT infrastructure, responsible for the support, and also responsible for the security of the IT systems across a business. So they essentially lead and have full responsibility over the IT stack, over all IT services, infrastructure, support, day-to-day -day BAU operations of all the IT in a business. They'll ensure that the environment is set up correctly, that it's been monitored, that it's been backed up, that it's secure, and that it's set up for success in the future. An IT manager needs to stay on top of their game, be up to date with technologies, and know what the best solution is for a business for the long haul and for their success and growth. Some companies may not have just a single IT manager. The IT manager can also go by different roles depending on the organization. Generally what you'll find is perhaps a small medium company, sometimes a large company, will have the title of IT manager or an IT lead or something similar to that. A larger organization, even a medium or a larger organization, may have multiple different types of IT managers that are responsible for different things. In a smaller medium business, an IT manager would look after everything and reporting to somebody like a director or even the CEO directly. In a larger business, they the IT manager team could report say to an IT director, to a CIO or to a CTO, a CIO being a chief information officer or a chief technology officer. So example of some of these other IT manager roles could be an IT operations manager, could be an IT infrastructure manager, they could be an IT help desk manager, an IT support manager, an IT security manager, even a service delivery manager. They're generally the most common IT manager type of roles, but you may find that in some organizations there is a pool of IT managers that become the IT management team. So for example, an IT ops manager or an IT operations manager may just be responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the IT in a business. End user support, making sure that the end users are looked after, looking after the hardware, the software of the end user computers, the phones, the, um, you know, the, the mobile devices, but they may not even touch infrastructure. Then you may have the IT infrastructure manager that is now responsible for maybe level three type of stuff, responsible for data centers, for servers, for switching, for networking, all of that, but don't get involved from a day-to-day -day operations perspective. You also may have an IT security manager who's responsible for just for the security of the organization. They're gonna be working closely perhaps with infrastructure and operations people and that the cybersecurity footprint in an organization is set up correctly, maintained and monitored at all times. And again, it depends on the company, but some of these IT manager roles could be blurred and could merge into each other. So an IT operations manager could also be responsible with infrastructure management, 
The infrastructure manager could also have an element of security management as well. And there's blurring between all of these roles. So we're gonna be primarily focusing on the high level IT manager. So IT manager encompassing all of these roles and talking about what the IT manager role specifically entails. So the IT manager, as I said, has overall management of the IT services and systems in an organization. So the first being end user equipment. So they're gonna be responsible for the end users of an organization. You've got staff in a company, right, of all, you know, marketing, sales, uh, finance, HR, all of these staff have IT systems that need to be managed and supported. They're gonna have desktops, laptops, a desk phone, a smartphone, a tablet. This equipment, of course, needs to be purchased. So the IT manager is gonna be responsible for what's called procurement. So going out with, you know, discussing with vendors, going out and purchasing the equipment and getting it set up either themselves or with their own staff in the operation support space. As well as that, uh, if, if a company is large enough to have say things like meeting rooms, boardrooms, other special common areas, even kitchens with IT infrastructure set up, uh, you've got projectors, you've got AV equipment, you perhaps you've got smart lighting. All of that equipment needs to be managed by the IT manager and their team. All of this equipment, of course, has software on it. Software, firmware, making sure that the operating system is set up, it's patched, all the software running on these, you know, the applications are installed, they're managed, they're patched, that all of this equipment has got adequate protection on it, that it's been secured, that it's got endpoint protection, that it's got antivirus. Is there software for remote management, such as SCCM, TeamViewer? Of course, if you are the IT manager responsible for day-to-day -day support as well, or you, or you have a team of people that um, the IT manager looks after, you need to have adequate software to be able to remotely log into these computers and support them. And of course, making sure that all of this equipment is licensed correctly, it's under support, it's maintained, and that it's replaced when it's end of life or if it needs fixing. So that's end user support, the end user operation support. You then move into infrastructure. We're now looking at things such as servers. So physical servers, virtual servers, and all the software that sits on these virtual and physical servers. Things such as Active Directory, DHCP, DNS, uh, all of the email services, you know, Exchange, for example, database servers, web servers. If the if the company is running websites, looking after that, making sure that they're up to date, that they're developed, and there are various other sorts of servers. Of course, these could be Windows servers. They could be Linux servers. Apart from servers, you've also got storage. Storage being uh, a few things: SAN and NAS, so storage area networks network attached storages, essentially big rack units full of disks that contain a whole bunch of data. Management of all the networking infrastructure, the routers, the switches, the firewalls, uh, proxies, load balancers, and a whole range of other things. So including the services coming in and out of a business. So you've got your phone lines coming in, perhaps a, a company that has multiple offices, the connections between those offices, the VPN links between those offices, all the security that's involved in setting all that up and making sure it's set up correctly. The firewalls being configured correctly, that only the right traffic can come in and out, that the load on the servers, on the infrastructure, on the network is adequate, that certain services are not overloading other sorts of services, setting up the adequate routes between all of your systems. So between server A and server B, perhaps a development network, a production network, routes to other offices, things like VLANing, and the overall monitoring of your traffic on your network. Uh, of course, the IT manager needs to make sure that their network is healthy, that it's not only functioning correctly, but it's secure, and that it's working at its best performance as well. Of course, all of this equipment needs to sit in data centers, whether that be server rooms, comms rooms, or specific data centers that the company looks after or has equipment in. So server rooms having all the physical equipment racked, perhaps on premise, or in a data center where it's, it's not in your business, perhaps it's a separate data center, perhaps they're renting space in a data center where there's equipment racked and loaded, responsible for all of that, including the cabling, the labeling, making sure it's all neat and tidy, that the fans are correct, that the air conditioning is correct, that there's fireproofing in place, 
and that it's all functioning correctly and healthy. And then of course, all the cloud technologies, all the cloud services. It's very rare nowadays to find a business that is 100% on-premise without even a small presence in the cloud. Most businesses nowadays run hybrid networks where there's some on-premise, so in the business, and some are in the cloud. The big services being you know, AWS, Azure, and others, but all of the services that are in the cloud essentially fall under the responsibility of the IT manager. All the servers, all the networking, and all the other services that are cloud-based. All this equipment needs to be monitored, ensuring that it's healthy, and of course I wanna look after backups, making sure that all the infrastructure is backed up, firmware is backed up on, on the networking and on the service perhaps, and that all the data is backed up as well, sent off site, it's got adequate retention policies, and that it's tested for restores frequently. So they're the technical elements, then you got all the stuff that is more managerial. So they're gonna be responsible for all the procurement of all of this infrastructure. We mentioned before an end user computing, but all the equipment needs to be purchased, needs to make sure that the warranty is up to date, keeping track of the warranty, making sure that, making sure that everything is licensed correctly, especially if you're looking at a big infrastructure and you're dealing with virtualization and databases, the licensing can be a real nightmare. So they're responsible for making sure that it's not a nightmare and that it's done correctly. They're gonna look after the management of all service providers and vendors within that business that are IT related. Now it really depends on the business, whether if it's small, medium or large, not all IT services may be in-house. Uh, not everything may be managed in-house. They may be responsible. The IT manager could look after the relationships with external vendors certain elements of the IT could be outsourced. Certain service providers may need to work closely with you to establish and maintain certain services. So for example, the links coming in and out of your business between offices, um, the, the, you know, if you're having servers on the cloud in different sites in a data center, there are relationships that need to be managed. So all of this procurement, all of this relationship management all of this needs to be maintained in some form of budget as well, making sure that the IT budget is accurate, that it's updated, working closely with the finance team to ensure that the budget is correct and asking for more money for the budget when that time is needed. Apart from managing relationships with external vendors, what about IT staff that perhaps the IT manager uh, has to look after? So it's very common for an IT manager to have people working underneath them. So people that are in support, level one, level two, level three. Support people, help desk people, system engineers, network engineers, database people, developers perhaps. All of these people may report into the IT manager. So they're not only gonna be you know, focusing on the process, the policy, the managerial, the technical, making sure that everything's working, but they've got IT staff that need to look after mentoring them, making sure that they're helped, making sure that they do their job correctly. They also should think about big picture stuff, the strategy, the roadmap, where is the company going, understanding the culture of the company, understanding the people of the company, making sure that he understands how all the company functions, the departments, what they do, and being an ear within and also having a good ear to hear what is happening around strategy and growth for the company. So I would recommend generally that the IT manager is involved in big decisions for how the business is moving. So if the business is going in a particular way, the CEO, the board wants to go in a particular way, the IT manager should be able to champion that and help the leaders in an organization to achieve their vision by developing the correct strategy that will help them get there. So that could be developing a roadmap, whether it be a one, two, three, five year strategy roadmap, you know, sort of forecast on where the IT systems will be going down the track to achieve the vision of what the company is wanting to achieve. They need to also own the policies and procedures for the IT department. So creating an IT acceptable use policy, creating a DRP, a disaster recovery plan, working with the relevant teams for a BCP, a business continuity plan, and all these other policies, manuals, procedures that the IT management team needs to follow. Making sure that staff are trained up. Is there training material for staff on how to use the IT systems? So all of this stuff should be managed and maintained and rolled out by the IT manager and their team. Some management teams as well like to see reports on the health and the well-being of the IT systems. So for example, a report could be automatically sent out to the directors or to the board 
to let them know how the IT help desk system is going, how the tickets are going, what's the health, what's my security, what does my development look like? Essentially providing them a, a snapshot update, perhaps they have a weekly, a fortnightly, a monthly meeting to let them know how the IT landscape is going. The IT manager may also be invited along to particular director board meetings, for example, to provide updates on how the IT systems and landscape is going. So along with that, of course, is perhaps the IT manager or the IT team being held against SLAs, uh, making sure that they're adhering to you know critical, high, medium, low tickets, incidents, service requests that come in uh, and making sure that they're met correctly that they've got good customer service skills and that staff are overall happy with the IT landscape and the support that has been offered by the IT management and the IT team as a whole. Big breath, there's a lot of stuff there, a lot more that we can talk about, but that hopefully provides you a snapshot on the higher level responsibilities of the IT manager. There's definitely a lot, and hopefully you have watched this and you have learned something new, perhaps something new that you've never thought about before. Perhaps you can let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. Let me know if you are yourself an IT manager. Perhaps you are working your way up towards that. Perhaps you're somebody that is not in IT at all, but wanted to know about this particular role. Let me know in the comments. I definitely would love to know and keep in touch. As always, remember to like this video and please remember to subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, to be kept up to date with all all of my video releases, clicking on that bell as well so that you don't miss out on what's being released. I really, really would appreciate it. Thank you so much for spending the time with me today, learning about the IT manager. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. All the best.